Okay, class. Uh, welcome you all. Uh, today uh, we will be discussing our second topic, which is related to the regulation of health and safety. That how the health and safety is being regulated in different countries, and what are the standards uh, of these occupational health and safety related uh, regulations, and how they are working. Uh, in the country or in the organization. And if someone as an individual, as an organization is not following these rules and regulations, which is set by the regulatory authorities or by the state, it will uh, have some consequences which will be facing by the organization, uh, which uh, will be discussed later in that chapter. So first of all, uh, in the beginning of the class, we have some discussion about the uh, health and safety regulations. So I will tell you uh, three different regulations uh, related to different countries uh, and uh, we'll be discussing that who the regulatory authority is, which are basically regulating these laws, which is implemented with the organization. So first of all, what is regulation? Regulation is basically a set of rule which is made or designed by the regulatory authority. So these a set of rules which are designed by any authority called regulation. Uh, in Pakistan, we have different regulatory authorities uh, working in different fields. Uh, uh, commonly, you may have known the PTA. Pakistan Telecommunication Authority. Basically, all the telecommunication sector is come under the PTA and PTA is itself is a regulatory authority. The authority is making regulation, norms and put sanctions if someone is not fulfilling their regulation or set of rules which, which are made by them. Uh, similarly, you may have known about OKRA. Uh, which is related to uh, oil and gas regulatory authority, which is uh, binding the uh, rules, which is making the rules for the oil and gas sectors uh, related to their prices as well, uh, which is commonly known and we are he uh, hearing in news as well about it. And similarly, there are much more regulatory authorities that is working in Pakistan. Now, basically, uh, in Pakistan, there is not one specific regulatory authority available. There is a uh, different authorities which are working individually and they are making the rules and in uh, that particular sector, they are working uh, in it and uh, making the rules. And if someone is not following those, these kind of rules, they put sanctions, uh, they put fine on them as well. So uh, again, there is no one such regulation or one such regulatory authority present in our country. So how does the regulatory authority working in Pakistan? I will be discussing uh, in uh, this about you, uh, about uh, the regulatory authority in the beginning of the lecture. So we will uh, have some uh, uh, idea that how the regulation is uh, basically working within the Pakistan. If uh, you uh, know about the state, so state has a different sections, different, uh, different governing bodies, which are connecting uh, with the states. Uh, if we, if I'm talking about the state, it, uh, it, uh, it contains the government, it contains the provisional, uh, provisional governments, it contains the establishment, it contains the bureaucracy. So these all are the basically the junctions or connections of the state. And these all are working in different and particular uh, positions or pos uh, different particular sectors and making their own set of rules. So collectively, the whole state is basically regulating the uh, different kind of things uh, which are uh, affecting the people or which are affecting the businesses. So overall, I can say that the state is basically the regulatory authority uh, working in the Pakistan. And uh, 
under the state there is no such regulatory authority available which are enforcing the laws within the country there are some uh, uh, obligations there are some standards that are available in pakistan uh, related to uh, boilers act uh, related to compensation act and different such acts are available within the pakistan but uh, not uh properly we can say that the proper execution of the law is not available or the proper execution of the rules are not available in our country now uh, in pakistan particularly we have a law which is available uh, uh namely uh, pakistan factories act which is made in 1934 and been amended so many times and uh promoting and changing uh, the main idea in that particular uh, regulation and i am going to show uh, this as well to you guys now the health and safety regulation is uh, likewise the other laws which is implemented in the organization it means that not uh, the uh, single authority is available or the single uh, uh, law available for the whole world Uh, it is not the case every country has their own set of rules every country has their own uh, ideas uh, or uh, their own regulatory authorities which are working within uh, different sectors and uh, trying to fulfill the requirement of the law now in pakistan uh, we have some law which is uh, made in 1934 and there is uh, different chapters in it so the chapter number 3 is basically related to the health and safety and that particular standard or regulation is implemented in the pakistan and the uh, provisions and the provisional governments are bounded to fulfill these requirement and follow as well and uh, obligated uh, or obligate on the organization which are working in different provisional uh, uh, under the provision governments so in pakistan particularly there is one standard which is called the pakistan factories act which is implemented in the country likewise in uk there is a regulatory authority which is called hse health safety executive they have their own regulation which is health and safety at work 1974 and likewise there is a, a, another a uh, internationally recognized uh, authority which is called osha which is working in us and they have their own uh, act which is called occupational safety and health act 1970 which is working within the uh, uk uh, us so the the set of norms is changing uh, according to the uh, regulation of different countries now i am going to show you the uh, law which is present in pakistan the law which is present in uk and the law which is present in us i have opened the tab so, so the first one is pakistan factories act you may have uh, uh, the screen is sharing to you if yes you can uh, raise your hand so i can uh, be assured that you are uh, watching it is it okay okay thank you thank you so uh, basically uh, the pakistan factories act the pakistan factories act is made in 1934 as amended in 1999 uh, uh, 1999 and recently uh, it is also been amended uh, back in 2012 as well so it is the factories act uh, uh, which is available on the ilo's website as well i have uh, open it from there and there is a uh, different uh, sections in that particular uh, act so there is a important uh, act which is available uh, called as chapter number 3 so the chapter number 3 is basically the health and safety now in this chapter there is a set of rules there is a set of obligations uh, uh, binded in it which is uh, telling different information about the ventilation issues about the fire issues about the machinery uh, safeguarding 
and different such acts are available in that particular uh, section. And this section is implemented in Pakistan. Every organization, either it is public sector or the private sector, it is their responsibility or it is their legal responsibility to fulfill the requirement of Pakistan Factories Act whenever they are processing their organization. Now, uh, unfortunately, in Pakistan, these regulations are only present in books or in, uh, I can say, in the files, uh, and the practical implementation is not available. Uh, every uh, organization is bounded to fulfill it, but uh, the implementation and the uh, effectiveness is not been uh, available within the countries. That is why we have discussed in uh, yesterday's class as well. The safety culture basically is not available uh, throughout the country. Uh, the one aspect is uh, this the organization are not fulfilling the requirement which they are signing before the start of uh, their work. So this law is available within the Pakistan and is implemented as well in the private sector and in the uh, government sector as well. But we are unaware of it. And as a, as a worker, nobody knows what the Factory Act is saying to us and what Factory Act is demanding from the individual or from the organization. That is one uh, misconcept uh, or uh, an unfortunate thing uh, that is uh, available in Pakistan. Uh, uh, Any one of you uh, is aware of it or uh, you are listening this uh, for the first time? Have you ever listened or uh, have you ever heard yes. of it? Yes. Yes, Ms. sir. Aaron? I am aware of the. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I am aware of this. This action. Okay. Okay. So uh, you are working in some uh, organization. Yes, sir. I am working in the Amita Consultancy. Okay. They are fulfilling or uh, they are following that uh, particular act or uh, just uh, present in uh, the files. Sir. Sir. Uh, in Pakistan, I have seen pharmaceutical multinational pharmaceutical companies are. Uh, are implementing these kind of regulation because they are bonded to uh, to uh, to follow this rule, uh, factory rule and OSHA rule. Usually, pharmaceutical companies are following. Okay, okay, thank you, Ms. Ira. You want to say something or to add something? Uh, yes, sir. We are aware also regarding this act. Um, uh, many industries, especially food industry, regarding already mentioned in. Food Safety Authority, that's why uh, many food industries as well as pharmaceutical industries follow regarding factory ad and factory chapter 3. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, uh, these regulations are implemented in food industries, in chemical industries, oil and gas industries, construction industries, and production industries majorly, and they are bounded to fulfill these requirements which are man mentioned in chapter number 3. So that is the first thing uh, you all must aware of because you are uh, living in Pakistan. You must have uh, awareness about the rules and regulation which is present in Pakistan. Now, moving on to the other regulation which is uh, implemented uh, in Pakistan, uh, sorry, in UK. So that is basically called Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. So the website you are uh, seeing is the regulatory authority which is called Health and Safety Executive. That particular Health and Safety Act is uh, available in UK. And our course is basically uh, from the UK. So uh, there is some discussion uh, going around in our uh, books as well. So this particular act is available in UK. If uh, you are a citizen of a UK, you have to fulfill that requirement, the organization, working in the UK are bounded to fulfill these requirements. Now, the Health and Safety Executive is the enforcement and regulatory authority which is implementing this act into uh, the UK uh, or in the organization and the businesses working in the UK. So that is the uh, other particular uh, act uh, which is uh, present in the uh, United, uh, United Kingdoms. The other 
uh, act which is uh, uh, called occupational uh, health and safety act 1970 and this is based uh, with the us united states and the osha is the regulatory authority and the website is of uh, united states uh, department of labor so all these are the different uh, type of acts which are implemented in different countries now uh, if i am combining it and particularly what these regulation what these act contains these act contains that how we can save our workers what is the responsibilities of employers what are the responsibilities of the workers uh, minimum standards for maintaining the machinery minimum standard standards available to fulfill the requirements so that the worker can be safe in the workplace so all these regulation all these acts are basically to bound the organization that the workplace there that they are providing to their workers are free of any hazards free of any risk so that the worker can fulfill their duties in a proper and safe manner these are the basic things which these acts are providing so and now we are uh, heading that how the health and safety is regulated there is some regulations available in different countries and there are some regulatory authorities in different countries which are uh, putting their efforts to fulfill the requirement and to implement the regulation which are made by them so uh, i have explained how the health and safety is regulated now you are aware that what regulation is available in pakistan what regulation is available in uk what regulation is available in us so there is different uh, other countries uh, must have their own regulation uh, uh, which are based line for them and every organization has to follow them now in our course we are basically studying the international uh, general safety so we are, will be discussing the international standards as well some uh, country wise standard we have discussed some country standards now in our particular chapter there is an authority which is uh, international labor organization we will be discussing their standards that how the ilo is operating what is the basic function of international labor organization and what is the minimum standards they are providing for the organization and if someone is not fulfilling these standards what will happen to them so these are the basic thing which we'll be discussing in today's class so now regulation i will repeat it again regulation is basically the set of rules made by the regulatory authority and what is regulatory authority the authority which is bounded which is uh, uh, responsible for implementing the set of rules they have made for the organization and take any action if someone is found guilty in it okay so these are basically called the regulation and regulatory authority now in our chapter or in our book there is a international authority uh, basically a uh, working uh, worldwide and it is a uh, most popular organization which is called international labor organization i have to discuss their history the international labor organization is established in 1990 after the first world war uh, in the first world war there is uh, a lot of blood uh, that been uh, lost in the uh, world war and millions of the laborers basically were involved in the uh, uh, war and they have uh, sacrificed their life in that particular thing so there will uh, there is an organization established that to protect the rights of the workers at the work at the country so the main function of international labor organization is to protect the prosperity of the workers to protect the right of the individuals and laborers as well and to fulfill the or to uh, enforce the organization to fulfill the requirement which are made by the either by the national governments or by the international uh, bodies so these are the basic functions of 
international labor organization now how the ilo is working and how ilo is implementing their set of rules uh, have any one of you is aware about the conventions or recommendations uh, anyone yes mohammad ali uh, uh, you want to add something okay so nobody is uh, uh, aware of yes miss uh, please unmute yourself sir, sir we are aware regarding the basal convention regarding to the environmental perspective not the okay. health and safety perspective okay uh, what what type of or what uh, uh, type of convention is basically related to the environment and suggested by the ilo is there any code or number uh, attached to it no okay you are not aware of it so uh, now i will be discussing that how international labor organization is working so uh, firstly we are uh, aware that the ilo is made for the uh, protection of labor rights basically okay now how the ilo is working ILO has 191 members which is basically the countries the pakistan us uk uh, uh, and different other countries are the members of international labor organization now international labor organization is uh, basically setting the standards and these standards are called conventions okay so conventions are the basic guideline basic uh, uh, set of rules which are made for the member state to fulfill it in their country and achieve what the ilo is wanting now the ilo's convention how it be derived in our national standards or national laws and regulation the member state have to ratify the standards of ilo else these are not the legal standards these are, these are the not the legal boundaries which are set uh, within the organization or within the state if uh, uh, we are from pakistan and pakistan is following around uh, 35 conventions which are set by the uh, ilo there are around uh, over 150 or 190 i guess uh, standards available in the form of conventions Uh, you can uh, uh, search through their website as well now how the international labor organization standards put into the country's uh, regulation ilo is making the standards and these standards are called convention okay now how the convention derive into any government or any state's law the state has to ratify these standards and put or make a part of their regulations if any country is not ratifying it it won't be the legal standard are you getting my point yes sir okay so uh, i will be uh, dic discussing it again uh, there is some question uh, wait for it okay once again ILO are making the standards and these standards are called convention you can make a note of it ILO international labor organization has standards and these standards are convention how the convention be a part of any country's regulation or legal system the country has to ratify it what does ratify mean that country has to follow it country country has to adopt it when country is adopting this such uh, uh, convention it is now the part of the country's uh, rules the country's laws as well if the country is not following the uh, or not ratifying the convention it won't be the legal system of the country now uh, how it works ilo has one standard which is about the child labor to protect the uh, rights of child laborers 
uh, and uh, not allowing the uh, underage uh, workers to work in the uh, in any sector. Now, ILO has the convention and Pakistan is following it. Pakistan is basically ratifying it and it is now the part of the our country. Likewise, in uh, uh, UAE, the child labor convention is not their legal, uh, not the part of their legal system because they have their own standards, they have their own law, which is setting that no one is allowed to work if their age is under 21. If someone is above 21, they are allowed to work uh, and they are not giving visas as well. So they are not basically ratifying the law of ILO. Now, Pakistan has an issue, so they, they uh, cannot make their own laws. There is a basically law made available in the market. They have to adopt it and make the uh, make it in their legal system. Uh, there is a question from uh, Miss Yespes. You can ask the question. Uh, sir, uh, yes, sir. Sir, my question is that uh, is it states are allowed to select some convention? or they are bound to follow the all conventions no no they are not bounded it but if there is an issue uh, arising in the country and they are not being capable or they are they don't have any resources to make such rules and if the ilo has that rule we can easily adopt it by uh, making or setting uh, our own set of rules it is an easy way to adopt this and if no one is bounded to adopt these uh, uh, things, uh, these standards. It is just the uh, uh, standard made by the ILO to uh, fulfill the requirement and to make the workplace safer for uh, everyone around the globe. So if uh, we are uh, work, uh, a Pakistani and we are a member of ILO, if ILO has a standard which uh, is, uh, for example, related to uh, some important issue, and Pakistan is facing that kind of issue. So we we can adopt it uh, because we are basically bounded through our uh, uh, financial issues. We are not financially that much strong and we are not capable of making such type of rules and regulation. So there is an organization and it is an easy way to adopt these uh, issues. So you will uh, be getting my uh, question answer that how the ILO derived uh in our... Uh, yes, sir. Okay. If anyone has any question, you can ask. So uh, we have to make the concept clear that how ILO is working uh, in the uh, yeah around the globe. If anyone has a question, we, he can ask. So I will clarify him. Okay. Anyone? Sir, I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Walid. Yes, Walid. Please. Yeah. Sir, I can understand that uh, ILO make laws in countries. Uh, 191, you said, like, that uh, there is in Saudi Arabia, there is a labor law. Like in our company, there are 500 labor working in our company. If uh, the our company's owner, if he didn't make uh, any labor insurance, then he cannot be able to work. Or even okay. his residence ID cannot be renew his residence ID. According yes. to his salaries and everything, they are taking care. But I didn't see in Pakistan like these things. The Pakistan has a labor uh, right, which is basically made by the uh, ILO. The labor protection right, woman protection right, child labor right. These are all the conventions of ILO and Pakistan is basically adopting it. Now, there is a uh, issue with our legal system that we are not fulfilling these requirements. Because the the people which are violating the law are bigger than the law, basically. If I'm uh, if, if I'm clarifying it, the people violating the laws are holding the on the legal system, and they are breaching the legal system uh, whenever they want. And uh, we have a lot of stories uh, moving around, and nowadays you can see how the legal system is working and how the people which are which have influence and uh, how they manipulating these regulation that is one uh, uh, major issue uh, that is present in pakistan that is why we cannot majorly see the regulation is implemented within our country so hope you are getting my point yes i got it got it. okay thank you so uh now moving back to conventions, conventions are basically the set of rules or basic set of rules. 
which are made for the state, for the individual and for the organization by the ILO. Okay. And along with that, there is a recommendation to support the convention. Recommendation is basically the guidance, the guidelines, how to promote the convention with our country. The recommendation are basically the uh, guideline or helping hand to implement the convention or to understand the convention. Other than that, there is a code of practice as well, which is uh, also uh, promoting or supporting the conventions uh, to fulfill it and the best of it can be taken in uh, into the legal system. So uh, now conventions are basic laws and recommendation are the guidance on those laws. Okay. Once again, INO has the standards. The standards are called convention and conventions are set of rules, set of, uh, uh, you can say, obligation that are put on the states, on the individual and on the organization that how to promote the health and safety in the workplace. Now, the recommendation is the guideline. You can uh, make it uh, very easy uh, if we are uh, studying uh, a book which is of mathematics and we are uh, solving the problem from our book. The book has questions for us to exercise it. Now, how the exercise can be uh, completed, there is a guide available for that particular book which is helping to understand these questions and we are easily uh, completing our uh, the assignments through that particular thing. Likewise, the convention or recommendation. Convention are the basic book, which has some questions for us to fulfill it. And if we are not understanding the question, the recommendation will be available to guide us that how these convention are put in place or how these convention will work within the organization. So it is very easy thing. Convention are basic laws and recommendation are the guidelines that how to implement these basic laws. Now, in our course, there is a law uh, available called Occupational Health and Safety Convention uh, with the code C-155. C is basically denoting the convention. 155 is the number of that convention. And this convention is held in 1981. And it is only based on occupational health and safety that how the uh, health and safety be managed uh, within the state or within the organization. Okay. So C is denoted for convention and uh, related to it, the recommendation is available and recommendation is denoted with R and the number of recommendation is 164. Now the question comes maybe in your mind that why the convention number and recommendation number are not same. The, you can, uh, if you are saying it, the convention is C-155. Now the recommendation is R-164. There is a difference of number in it. That is because one convention may contain several recommendations. Okay. If a convention is set up, there may be different guides available. Uh, it can be one, two, three guides, which is related to one set of convention. So that is why the convention numbers are not uh, being same. So once again, conventions are basic law and recommendations are the guideline of these law. Now our uh, course has the uh, Occupational Health and Safety Convention, majorly named as C-155 and it is important uh, according to our uh, exam perspective that uh, how it will um, uh, implement it. Now what does these convention and recommendation contains? The Occupational Health and Safety Convention, which is C-155 and recommendation R-164. These contains how to make the policy, what type of policy be made by the organization, what is the responsibilities of organization, what is the responsibilities of workers, what are the rights of workers, how contractors should work in the workplace, how contractors should engage uh, with different contractors within the same workplace. These whole information are available in that particular conventions and recommendations. And uh, 
uh, in coming slides, we are discussing all these things as well. Once again, I will repeating what does or what type of information is present in conventions and recommendations. So convention and recommendation contains for the organization that how to set out their occupational health and safety policy. Okay. The second important thing is how to promote the health and safety within the workplace. What are the responsibilities of employers which are basically employing the workers? What are the responsibilities of workers? What are the rights of workers? How to manage the contractors? How contractor must be engaged with other contractors within the same workplace? These whole set of information are included in our conventions and recommendations. So are you getting my point? What type of information are containing in that C155 and R164? If yes, you can raise your hand. So uh, I will move forward. Or you have any question, you can ask. Okay. Uh, if anyone has a question, he can open his mic and ask the question. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Waalaikum Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. My internet was unstable. So please repeat this in okay. a short okay. way. Actually, I'm not getting the convention and recommendation numbers. Okay. C155, okay. why this is C155 and R164? Okay. Why is it? Because it is their number. It's 15 is just a number. There are a lot of conventions. There, uh, It's starting with uh, one and till uh, goes to 191 uh, conventions are basically mm -hmm. available within the uh, by the organization, which is called ILO. Now, C155 is a counting number. So that is why uh, we are uh, writing it. Our uh, organization is writing with it. C is basically convention. And the important thing is this convention is about occupational health and safety, how to promote it in the organization. So how to promote the occupational health and safety standards, there is a convention which is called C155. That is why this number is put in place. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you told us that the uh, basic role of this course is OHS, Occupational Health and Safety. So yes. is this about uh, that same thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OHS is basically occupational health and safety. So that, that particular standard is related to occupational health and safety. If you are working in any sort of organization, how to promote the health and safety or how to fulfill the requirement of health and safety. That is why their convention is set out. Okay. And sir, which persons can be uh, come into the exam? Like you said, it is important in the exam. Uh, I I am uh, uh, discussing the uh, information which is basically uh, available in C one five five and will let you know what type of question okay. will come in your exam. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Now, as I have told you, the conventions are basically the uh, basic laws and basic regulation and recommendation are the guidelines or details about these conventions. So that is particularly the difference between convention and recommendation. So once again, convention are basic laws and recommendation are the guidelines of these laws. Okay. Now, our course contain the conventions, which is uh, basically C155 and they, uh, C155 has different articles. Now, the important information Ibrahim has asked what type of question can come in our uh, exam. So the employer responsibilities, we will be discussing it right now, is important information, which is, which is a part of questions as well, or part of paper as well. The uh, employer responsibilities can be asked in the question and how it uh, will come in the question. Uh, we will discuss it tomorrow. And uh, now in today's lecture, we have the legal reason as a major aspect we are in, a, in our uh, assignment. And we will be discussing it about the uh, legal reason at the end of our lecture. So the employer responsibilities are important uh, for understanding and for exam preparation as well. Now, who the, the employer is and 
uh, how can we define employer if uh, any one of you can define it who is employer yes uh, ibrahim would you like to uh, tell me uh, what is the definition of employer in my mind it can be uh, hr who hires the employees okay in your thoughts it is uh, yes. hr okay okay i, yes. I got your answer valid what is your thought on it uh, who is employer valid are you uh, am i audible to you? yes mohammad ali you can add yes uh, assalam alaikum i well, think the uh, employer is the company okay management. it can okay and okay it is a top management it is a top one uh, i have one answer which is uh, hr the other one is saying that it it is the top management rahim uh, what's your thought who is employer sir employer can be the company or the anyone who can own hire you for his services to give him a services Be either right him. it oh, it right, can be right, a company right. or a person it can be a company it can be a person who is hiring you uh, umair amla would you like to add something in it what is employer in your uh, perspective any organization who hires any employees other? okay now the ibrahim has said the same thing about the hr he made the hr as an employer but the hr is basically hiring the people and we are seeing that the organization who hires the people is basically the employer now it is there is an important information you have to understand employer is basically can be organization can be a single owner can be the brand can be partners who are actually uh, hiring the people for their services now the employers are not directly involved in such activities so that is why they are sharing their responsibilities to the people like hr like the finance manager like the board of directors like the management or the top management the top management are basically those people which are fulfilling the requirement of employer or fulfilling the responsibilities of employer for the employer okay so now it is important thing employer can be a company can be an organization can be some brand can be a single individual who owns the company can be a partners or brothers which are uh, holding the organization so uh, we uh, can say these are the employers now these have some responsibilities which is discussed by the ilo now the first of all in conventions article number 16 c155 has different articles now the article 16 is about the employer responsibility now convention is giving the information of, of employer that how they are responsible what they have to do in within the within the workplace now employer has three responsibilities uh, sorry sir i was yes 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 Yes, Wali. I was disconnected. I was disconnected. You were ask uh, asking me a question. Yes, it it's done now. Uh, you can add who the employer is if you are available right now. You can answer it. It can be an individual organization, government, or private sector. Okay. We, yeah. 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 Uh, we have discussed that uh, it is uh, right. Uh, you are right, basically. it can be the organization who hire the people okay thank you walid okay, okay. so uh, in once again we have the convention called c155 now c155 is the convention of occupational health and safety in that particular convention there are different articles now the important article is uh, c in article number 16 now article 16 is of of employer responsibility now convention has put three obligation or put three in, uh, responsibilities on the uh, basically on the employer first thing the c155 said employer has to ensure that the workplace where the people are working 
the machinery and equipment which are using in their daily routine work and the working method or working process which are being used by the workers in their daily routine work must be safe and without risk to the health of any worker. Now, it is the first responsibility of the employer. Once again, employer has the first responsibility under C-155 that they must follow or they must ensure the workplace where the workers are working must be safe. The machinery you are providing in the form of vehicle, in the form of uh, any uh, sort of equipment or any sort of heavy machinery uh, which is operating by the worker must be safe and are not uh, putting the life of worker in danger. And the working methods or working process which are basically following by the workers must be safe. If these all, if these all are safe, the worker will be safe. Now it is the responsibility of employer to put the workplace, the machinery, the equipment and the working method in uh, practice in such a way that nobody can be harmed in the workplace. Now, uh, in previous lecture, I have told you that there are courses about management of health and safety. So health and safety, how to be managed uh, in the, the uh, workplace, how to manage the health and safety of any individual by giving them safe environment, by giving them safe machinery, by giving them safe equipment, by giving them safe working methods so they will uh, fulfill their requirement in an easy way. Now, it is a first responsibility on the employers. Now, comes to the second point. The second point is the employer must ensure that the chemical, physical, and biological substance are agent. What is chemical agent? It can be uh, the cleaning agents which are using in the organization. Now, basically, uh, we are heading towards the occupational health and safety. So, the chemical has different sort of property. In food uh, industry, the chemicals are different. In the construction industry, the chemicals are different. In the chemical industry itself has a different chemical depending upon their property. They, these all chemicals in whatever the workplace is must be safe. The other thing is physical substance. Now physical substance, those substance which are appearing by an activity. For example, if we are cutting any uh, uh, marble or any tile or any ceramic, uh, which is producing basically the dust. The dust is the physical substance which can harm the people. So it is the responsibility of employer to make sure these substances are without risk that are present in the workplace. And same like with the biological substance. Now biological substance contain viruses, fungus and bacteria. The COVID is a uh, one type of virus, the malaria and different uh, viruses, dengue, you must have heard and different uh, bacteria that are uh, present in the uh, workplaces. So the chemical agents, the physical agents, or the biological agents, if they are uh, being present in the workplace, must be without risk and keep the workers uh, be safe of it. That is the responsibility of basically the employer. Now we have discussed the two responsibilities. Now come to the last point in the convention. They said that the employer must provide personal protective equipment to their worker or personal protective clothing to the worker so that they are safe of any uh, injury or health, air health issues. So these are the three basic uh, guidelines which are provided by the ILO for the employer to fulfill it. Now, only the three uh, important factors are available for employer only? No. Every single point has some different story. If we are heading towards the workplace, if I am working in the workplace, there is lighting issue is a part of workplace issue. Uh, temperature issue is also the part of workplace issue. Okay. Uh, the uh, housekeeping issue is the part of workplace issue. So, the relevant points related to it are also the uh, part of that workplace. So we, if we are, if we, our workplace is safe, 
are without any obstruction the walkways are safe or workplace will be safe and that is the responsibility of the worker now equipment what is the equipment the ladder is the equipment if someone is working at height using the equipment it must be safe so that the person working at height must be prevented from an accident so uh, these guidelines are basically uh, provided uh, more adhesively by recommendation no so uh, i will discussing these three uh, in or uh, summarizing these three uh, important uh, obligation on employer by the c155 or by the ilo what are they the workplace machinery equipment and the working method must be safe uh, keep the worker safe of biological chemical and physical agents and provide the personal protective equipment like helmet shoes uh, gloves etc that is basic responsibility of the employer which comes under the c155 okay miss i have some question uh, with us yeah you can ask the question please unmute yourself uh, sir what about radiations in uh, clause number 2 yeah yeah radiation are basically the physical substance na so it is the pa part of the organization we have to protect our workers from it as well we can uh, distribute or we can uh, distinguish different thing in set particular information basically the definition is limited uh, to us uh, we can put it in uh, any workplace if you are working in a hospital there are also radiation if you are working in oil and gas industry there are in radiations uh, if we are working within, within the any engineering workshop uh, where welding is performing these are also the radiation we have to put our workers safe from these radiations basically which are the uh, uh, physical occurring substance okay so uh, all the meaning are uh, be placed or be hidden within these particular obligation of ilo okay so uh, i have told you the conventions are basic guideline so employer has duties and basic duties which are mentioned in convention now these duties are more enhanced in recommendation now heading towards the recommendation same employer responsibility but the change of article now in r164 the article number is 10 in c155 the article number is 16 for the employer responsibility in r164 the recommendation is changed to uh, article number 10 now article number 10 has the same responsibility but with uh, more points and more definitions as well now uh, reading it one by one the first responsibility under the recommendation which is basically the guidance to the employer that they must they not only to ensure but they have to provide and maintain the workplace maintain the machinery maintain the equipment and maintain the working method as well that are safe for their Uh, workers now what does it mean if i am using the laptop the laptop is equipment for me which is provided by the organization now the organization has a responsibility this laptop must be safe uh, i have uh, no issues with it uh, i uh, i must be protected of this particular equipment so how can be i uh, how can i be safe from this equipment there must be uh, the inspection of that equipment there must be an uh, maintenance of that equipment which is basically related to that that machine now uh, here we have to understand the workplace is not just one word all the relevant issues which is basically arising from the workplace are the issues of workplace if we are using the machinery if we are using the for example uh, uh, cutting machine okay so how to how the machine will be safe if we are regularly inspecting it so regular inspection is also the responsibility of employer how can the person be safe from that machinery if it is maintained regularly so regular maintenance of machinery is also the responsibility of employer so there are some hidden words which are present in that particular point are also the part of that particular convention or particular obligation which is put on the employer moving on if i am providing the worker the machinery now the 
employer has the responsibility to give instruction, to give training to that particular person so that the use of equipment be safe, use of that machinery be safe for the workers and for the organization as well. So the second important point for the uh, employer or the second important responsibility for the employer is to provide the training, to provide the information and instruction to their workers, which are working for them. Now heading towards the third point, if I am giving the worker the equipment and I am giving the instruction and training, not to allow it work uh, by their own, you must have adequate supervision on him either daily or routinely on him so that the standard be ensured that the worker is performing the activity according to the working method which is given to him. Okay. So the third responsibility is the employer has to provide the supervision on the worker to ensure that the use of health and safety or relevant health and safety standards are met within the organization. Now coming towards the fourth point, the fourth point is about the organizational arrangements. Now, first we have to understand the arrangements. Arrangements are basically the resources. Now, organizational arrangement are the organizational resources to introduce for the activities. If I am working uh, in the uh, confined space, basically. So in confined space is the area where some additional protocols have to be followed. We have to give the permit. We have uh, the uh, ventilation. We put in the, that particular place so that the activity being carried out in the, that particular space will is safe. So the organizational arrangements are using for the activities to ensure that these activities are fulfilled in proper way and no harm occur to any individual. Okay. So organizational arrangements are the organizational resources. Organizational resources can be the uh, extra equipment, extra supervision, uh, or it can be the finance, it can be the manpower, it can be anything uh, which are using for the activities to ensure that these activities are undertaken with proper manner and nobody is harmed in that activity. Moving forward, we have discussed earlier that employer has a responsibility to provide PPE. In that particular section, the employer has to provide PPE, but without any charge. You are not allowed to take any charge from workers. If you are giving the helmet, if you are giving the shoes to the worker, you are not allowed to charge of it. So that is obligation put by the uh, ILO on the employer. Moving forward, the organization has to adopt such working hours which has the rest breaks. So the health and safety of the worker must not be compromised with that particular working hours. We are seeing that in our industries uh, right now, the workers are working uh, for around 15 or 16 hours uh, uh, continuously without any break. So if you are working for that long period, your efficiency of the work, your productivity towards the work may be compromised and it will lead you to the accident. So it is the responsibility of the organization to ensure that the working hour being set out in such a way that there must contain the rest breaks. So the worker may not be exposed to any particular hazard. And moving on, the organization, the employer has to take the step to eliminate the mental and physical fatigue of any individual okay working within the organization if 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 someone is overloaded or overburdened with their activity it must face he must face the physical fatigue he must face the mental pressure which can which will lead basically him to perform the mistake and mistake will lead him uh, to the different consequences he may put his life in danger. So it is the responsibility of employer to eliminate the fatigue. How the eliminate, how the fatigue will be eliminated through proper procedure. To not overburden the workers, 
to not uh, uh, giving the worker that much work which are not in their control okay so the organization have to eliminate the mental and physical fatigue which is basically the responsibility of employer and uh, with uh, last responsibility employer has to up to date itself with new knowledge new technical knowledge and have to adopt this technical knowledge to uh, comply with the uh, points which are discussed so that the workplace be modernized uh, equipment be uh, changed with particular time uh, we have seen that uh, in uh, different uh, sectors such as banking the banking was uh, 20 years back the people were uh, uh, counting the uh, any accounts in the registers manually and the, with time to time the new changes are adopted and the uh, sector is now uh, in your hand if you are uh, uh, if you are, have to uh, go to your account you don't uh, have to go to the uh, bank you have the mobile you can access through uh, your mobile as well so that is basically the technology the technical knowledge which is being adopted by the organization and make the facilities for the worker so that they will be safe in the workplace now overall these are the responsibilities and the that responsibility which i am telling you right now is the most important question which comes in the uh, paper and around uh, there are around 24 papers uh, till 2020 uh, till now We, uh, the uh, ILO has uh, sorry NEPOS has taken twenty four open book examination and out of these twenty four, uh, around sixteen to seventeen times this question has appeared in the exam. So it is very important. Basically, how the the question is appearing. Uh, Ibrahim has asked me that uh, how uh, yeah what type of information is important for us with uh, in the in this particular uh, exercise. so the employer responsibility and the worker responsibility which come uh, in, in again uh, are the basic and the important question which comes in the uh, assessment so how does the assessment uh, came to us there is a scenario there are workers or there is an organization working in a uh, in a way which are uh, not are not fulfilling the uh, responsibilities Uh, put by the ILO. So the question will be that uh, based on this scenario only, you have to read and mention where the organization is not fulfilling their requirement under the ILO R one six four, and you have to highlight these areas. So uh, the your question will be done, and we will uh, practice that question for in tomorrow's class as well. So you will have the clear uh, image how the question came into the uh, uh, assessment. and how we have to answer it okay so ibrahim you must have uh, got my point okay so anyone of you uh, can explain what the responsibility of employers are in a uh, short form or in uh, uh, or to summarize it anyone uh, ibrahim would you like to summarize the information that what are the employers responsibility in a quick way Okay, Willie, you uh, you can start it. Okay, summarize it in. Yeah, so uh, basic. Okay, okay, yes, please. Yeah, basically, basically, the employer's uh, responsibility are these. What you told, uh, we can we can say that uh, make the first of all make the environment safe. Make the environment safe according to their company. Which kind of company? How many employer they have, and they should have to up to date. but we are here to learn and understand these things the employer will hire a safety manager he will hire and we are standing uh, we are here and uh, we are stating that uh, these things that uh, these things should be, we will uh, these thing will manage the safety manager so employer will hire a safety manager and he will he will manage these things okay uh, ms saira would you like to add uh, something or would you like to uh... summarize it for me the what are the responsibility uh, of em employer you both are the sisters i i'm sorry uh, yes, not sorry, yes sir okay. we are sisters 
Okay. Uh, so prior responsibility basically the uh, work workplace machinery equipments should be safe and the employer should be safe. Training must be provided. Specific training must be provided. The supervision of the applications and the function must be provided in the organization is the core responsibility of the any organization. Okay. And that... also. Yes. Yes. Please and continue. Also, and also uh, introduce organization arrangement relevant to the activity size and the size uh, of the relevant thing and provide appropriate PP spe specific to the work. And uh, also organization must be, uh, must, be uh, must be specific the working hours and must give give a uh, stress break to uh, which do not adversely affect the, their health. And also inspect their uh, uh, health uh, health through medical testing. For example, in mine industries, you have to uh, you you are you are born to uh, you you are born to uh, check their uh, blood samples uh, blood samples regular inspections for their workers and uh, uh, practical uh, and the uh, uh, organization should be eliminate. Physical and mental fatigue. This is very, very, very important aspect. Uh, in fact, in Pakistan, the, we are ignoring this. But mental peace and the mental peace of the work is, the, I think, the core of any workplace. Without the mental peace and the uh, mental uh, flex mind, you can't you can't do anything. And you can't keep up to date always. Yes, and keep up to date the implies about new regulation, new rules, new technology. In Pakistan, uh, in fact, in, uh, I am doing when uh, when uh, in uh, in Pakistan in 2020 COVID area, we are not aware of the these online things. But, uh, but now, Alhamdulillah, now uh, the all students are connected from different areas. So I think uh, these kind of things, these kind of training are very important. Not for the environment, the, this will impact and this will help also in the uh, real real life task and uh, uh, in in. Practical, uh, practical activities of the life. Yes, that that is very true. Uh, it is very simple. If you are working, uh, of, if you are running a restaurant, uh, your responsibility is to maintain the workplace and the hygiene in that particular workplace must be uh, available. As we have discussed, that biological agents must be eliminated. If you are working in food industry. There uh, may be biological agent which can uh, uh, spread viruses or different any aspects uh, which can be harmful not only to the worker but to the customers as well. So we have to protect everyone if uh, he is working in our workplace. Now, uh, there is not only the responsibility of employer to uh, make everything right and make uh, everything work. There are some responsibility of workers as well. Now, who are the workers? We will be discussing it uh, in the next uh, slide. And so, what are the workers and what is meaning of the workers? Worker is not just laborers, not just cleaners. No, workers are basically all those people which are actually working for the employer. It can be journal manager and it can be the cleaner as well. So, every individual working within the organization has different roles and responsibilities and they have to fulfill their requirement. As Ibrahim has said that uh, HR has a responsibility. HR is basically the role and their responsibility is to hire. And we have discussed this responsibility actually belongs to the uh, employer. Employer has a responsibility to give the uh, worker the wage for what they are working for. But in the organization, there are account sections, there are account officers which are basically providing such uh, wages to the workers. You are safety officer you, and you will be the safety officer in the workplace. Employer has the duty to uh, ensure the safety of the workplace. Basically, it is your responsibility to ensure that the workplace is safe. So, the responsibilities of employer is distributing in different uh, people. Now, there is a responsibility of every individual if he is working as a cleaner or he is working as a manager, they have to fulfill their requirements so that the employer has to be uh, kept away from all legal issues. He may be free from the uh, criminal and civil acts. He may be free of, the, uh, of giving the compensation. That will only be done if worker is performing 
their activity in safe manner. Now, what is the responsibility of uh, workers? R164 has mentioned that the first responsibility of any individual working within the organization is to protect their self and of other working around him. If I'm the worker working in the workplace and if, if I'm the machinist working with the machine, it is my responsibility to keep myself safe and my helper, which is helping me in uh, uh, operating that machinery be safe. So it is our responsibility. It is not just, uh, we, we don't have to put everything on the employer that he is responsible. He will be doing everything for us. There's our responsibility as well. We have to uh, make ourselves safe and of others which are working around us or with us. Yes, madam. Sir, is there any article number of the responsibility of workers? Yes, it is mentioned uh, uh, in the slide. It is recommendation number 16. No, sir. This is the uh, in the uh, this is this is under the recommendation heading. I am talking about the convention uh, convention point of view. Is it any article number of the responsibility of workers? Uh, we will be discussing the article as well. Uh, it will uh, comes under the uh, definition of rights of the worker. The convention has the rights and recommendation has the responsibility. Basically, these be both are the binded uh, standards. So in the recommendation, there are responsibility and in the convention, there are the rights of the worker. We will be discussing later the okay. rights as well. Okay. Okay. Jim. So uh, we were uh, talking about the responsibility of any individual. Uh, Waleed uh, is working with us uh, he is, uh, in the U. Uh, I think he is working in the Saudi Arabia with the company. Uh, Waleed, you are an employee of an organization. What is your responsibility? What organization has uh, put uh, or uh, are expecting uh, from you what you will do within the organization? What is your responsibility? Please highlight yourself that what are the basic yeah. responsibility of yourself in the workplace? Yes, please. Yeah, my basically my responsibilities are there to make the environment safe. And okay. uh, I, I'm working alone now. Before another organization, there was a safety manager. After that, he will inst instruct me. And uh, I was fulfilling my responsibilities as a safety officer. But currently now, there is no safety manager. That's why uh, you are talking about the, the regulations and the employer's uh, responsibilities, that it is related to the safety manager. Like okay. uh, now I'm working alone here. Yeah. To okay. make the you, environment... You know we we are clear with you now that your responsibility is to make the workplace safe is that you are saying yeah. to us yeah what if you are not fulfilling the responsibility who will face the legal issue what's your thought my employer yeah company will face the and he will he will uh, he will uh, talk to me uh, if uh, he will get any trouble because of the labor law and anything, then I will be the responsible to give you them answer. Be, That's why, you, and I also, yeah, no, I also no, distribute. Please, uh, relate it with me. Now, uh, you are only responsible at the site. You are yeah. not liable to the law. Law is us actually binding on the employer. If anything, yeah. any mishap happen, the organization will ask you, what have you done? But the yeah. legal authorities will ask the employer, what have you done? Are you getting my point? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, got it. So, so I that, um, basically the okay. uh, we will, uh, the discussion is of about that every individual within the class will be responsible at some side. They have to fulfill their requirement. Why they are fulfilling their requirement to save their self in the workplace and to save their employer from the legal authorities, which are actually yeah. holding. So that is our responsibility, basically. Correct, correct. If yeah. I am and also, also, yes, I, yes, also, yes. Yeah, like as a safety officer, we are, if we will be a safety officer in anyone in this class, then he, he will teach the people, he will educate the people at the site, at the workplace. He just there to educate them. And uh, it's uh, it's uh, it will be depending on depend on activities, daily activities, 
and he will distribute like you are talking now this in this uh, session that uh, everyone has their responsibilities so we make a training session every day in the morning okay. or weekly yes we will rahil we has, will rahil teach them rahil has to, rahil has to uh, add something or i have to answer a uh, question uh, yes sir rahil please i ask. have to ha i actually i have to ha add something yes yes, Being, yes please, uh, yes, please. We, actually we are auditing the, as a nokia ehs team we are auditing the things that employer has the responsibility to provide the pps and, and trainings everything to the employee at the end of ehs being a ehs manager uh, as a remote job we are auditing either worker is following that or not it's our responsibility to enforce that you have been provided with the pps you have been provided with the trainings you have been provided with a safe car to travel and safe machinery and insulated tool everything and proper belts if you are working on a height why you are not following at the end it's our responsibility first encounter we will be with us then the employer who is uh, that's i want to say being an employee we have to make self, that's why we have to put ourselves yes, uh, rahil uh, i i will conclude your uh, info, uh, your uh, suggestion is that the responsibility comes with authority if you are responsibility you, you have any responsibility you must have the authority as well and if you are not fulfilling your responsibility you must be accountable to organization and in some cases you will be responsible to the legal authorities as well because you have the basic authority you are the hsc officer you are the uh, one who are aware of, of the health and safety laws if we are not fulfilling it so we are also the part of this uh, particular thing that uh, uh, the legal actions will be against us as well so uh, moving on to the topic that employer uh, sorry workers have the responsibility to, to keep their self and the others safe in the workplace and most important information for the workers are to comply with the instructions as rahil said he he is responsible to provide hsc trainings now the workers who are taking that training are liable to comply or to follow these trainings if they are not following these trainings they are basically violating the uh, legal responsibility and their legal responsibility is to comply to follow the instruction which are given to them by the hsc officer or by any responsible person on the side so there are the workers responsibility to fulfill it uh, they may be managers they may be simple workers as well use the pps in a right way if uh, the organization is giving you the pp it is for your safety not to play with it and not to uh, 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 providing or uh, manipulating these things it will put you in danger as well so it is the responsibility of any individual uh, if uh, the organization is giving you the helmet keep it on your head not somewhere else so you will be protected at the site the worker has the responsibility to report if there is any situation Uh, which is hazard you have to report it if there is any accident in the workplace you have to report it that is the responsibility and legal responsibility of the worker to report any situation which is hazardous uh, to report any work related accident which uh, which uh, which is important so overall the worker has to keep their self safe the worker has to fulfill the requirement uh, in terms of abiding the instruction abiding the training in terms of using the safe uh, pp and uh, to fulfill their requirement and uh, report any situation which is hazardous to their uh, organization now it is the responsibility of the worker individual workers working within the organization now moving forward uh, there are some rights as well there is a, a right of the worker as well uh, mentioned in article number 19 of c155 the convention has put uh, the employers in in some practice that they have to fulfill the right of the worker these can be said as employer responsibilities as well because employer are liable to protect the right of workers now what is the right of worker the right of worker is to be given with proper information to be given with the proper training to be consulted by the employer in health and safety matters and 
be not put in the place where his life is in danger so these are all the rights of worker what are they they must be given with the proper specific information regarding their work they must uh, given with their uh, safety training related to their job activity uh, or about the site as well they must be consulted they must be involved by the organization in uh, if they are purchasing something if they are um, uh, implementing any health and safety regulation it is the responsibility of the employer to consult with the uh, their workers and it is the right of worker to not work there where they think their life is in danger and they can uh, said we i am not available for you in that particular thing until the workplace is safe for him so these are the rights of the worker now the rights and uh, basically the uh, responsibilities of worker is also important for paper point of view uh, it uh, uh, same like employer responsibility there are worker responsibilities as well uh, there may be two cases uh, in one scenario there is a uh, employer who are not fulfilling the requirement and other case there must be an worker uh, a worker which is not fulfilling the requirement of uh, or not fulfilling the responsibilities which are uh, put in by the legal standards on him so overall the c155 the international standards are wanting that employer must protect their worker and worker have to avoid, uh, adopt all the information given by the organization so the health and safety is basically the collective thing you cannot rely on one person you cannot rely on employer and you cannot rely on worker uh, as well these must be fulfilled by the both they they must be linked if any individual is not fulfilling the requirement the the both both will be affected and they both will be affected and there are some uh, legal aspect which will uh, waiting for them and will put them in dangerous situation and uh, the uh, next thing is basically if uh, we are not following the health and safety standards so there are enforcement agencies there are regulatory authorities which will uh, uh, play very important role and they will uh, either uh, uh, perform an investigation either put you in uh, uh, court or uh, give the advice to you or take any enforcement action against you these are all the function or role of enforcement agencies now how the enforcement agencies is working that uh, they comes under the state okay uh, they are working for the state and they are uh, liable to perform inspection they are liable to uh, put anyone in uh, uh, in jail as well if they are violating the health and safety regulation so uh, our last topic of the day is uh, consequences of non compliance if i am the uh, worker or i am the organization and not fulfilling the requirement which is put by the international standard or national framework so how will it come uh, with us the enforcement authorities will take action they may provide notice based on the probability of the violation you have done if someone is killed in the workplace there will be no notice there will be proper action the severity of the accident will depend that if the organization has to, uh, to face the uh, notice or may be put in jail so the consequences are can be the notice can be issued and notice are of two type one is of improvement and other is of uh, prohibition improvement has uh, some suggestion or some recommendation uh, by the enforcement authorities for the employer that you have to put particular uh, thing uh, to the machine so it may be safe and give the improvement notice that i will visit again and check the machine as well so that notice called improvement notice prohibition notice is sort of a, a, a strong warning or a, 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 a very dangerous call for the organization if they are not fulfilling the requirement they may face some sanction uh, and what can be the sanction they uh, may lose the license they may uh, face the closure of business 
they may face the prosecution they may be put in a uh, uh, jail they, the criminal proceeding may start against him the civil act may, uh, may uh, take action the worker may file a case in civil court the worker may ask for the uh, uh, compensation claims so these all are the consequences and these all are the basically the legal reason for, from which we have to uh, protect ourselves and our organization we have to protect our organization from uh, the notices from the uh, enforcement actions from the penalty from the criminal proceeding from the uh, compensation uh, so it is our responsibility as a health and safety officer to protect not only the workers but our employers as well so uh, these are our uh, concluded in today's lecture so i will be summarizing whole thing that what we have learned today and will ask uh, will take your question as well so in today's topic we have discussed some regulations uh, related to pakistan which was pakistan factories act uh, chapter number 3 uh, occupational health and safety act uh, at work of uk in of 1974 ohs act of uh, 1970 by osha uh, these are the regulations we have discussed and we have discussed the international labor organization role and their standards how they are implemented within the organization or within the countries what are the difference between convention and recommendation convention are basic guideline and recommendation are detail uh, in our course uh, the occupational health and safety convention called c155 we have discussed the employer responsibility to protect the workers uh, by providing safe environment safe workplace to uh, keep them away from the mental and physical uh, fatigues and different other aspect we have discussed and alongside we have discussed the uh, worker responsibility and right to protect their self and uh, to protect others uh, follow the safety instruction and alongside uh, we have discussed some rights that uh, they, they may be given with the proper training instruction be consulted and be not uh, put in danger uh, where their life is in risk so these all are the basically the uh, legal uh, responsibilities if the organization is not fulfilling it they will face the consequences which is mentioned uh, in your uh, slide as well they will face the notices they will face the uh, sanctions they will uh, be facing the criminal proceeding as well so overall these are the basically the responsibilities if we are not fulfilling it uh, we will face some sanction now there is a question from ibrahim ियन if you are liable and you have not uh, fulfill your requirement you may face some sanction as well because the law is not just for employer it is for workers as well and the safety officer is basically the worker as well by itself and there is responsibility for them to provide safe training and safe workplace and if they are not fulfilling it they may face uh, the sanction as well so it will depend upon uh, the situation and after investigation the the actual cause will be highlighted and the action will be taken after the actual cause okay if we find out the actual cause who is the responsible person and the action will be taken accordingly okay yes wali please ask the question yes sir as uh, rahil said that uh, the safety officer and manager will be the responsible for the incident accident and happen at the site but uh, yesterday you talked uh, about the bin laden company which uh, crane accident in the makka you know it yes, uh, yes. Uh, the crane crane accident you know the site work site in construction if there is a heavy equipment like crane then there will be a checklist the safety officer will check the crane is uh, anti tube lock system and everything is good or not after that proceed the work 
So maybe that time, I don't know about that. Maybe that time the safety officer, he did the, who did the uh, check the crane and uh, he made a mistake. He don't know about the proper checking system. Uh, so I, I, have the to, accident I, have, I have to add something and clear your uh, question. Uh, there is a proper investigation, uh, which is available online as well. You can read it by your own. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, talk going around. There was a, a call from the uh, uh, legal authorities that it must be stopped. The work must be stopped. And the organization is basically avoided the uh, these, uh, uh, information from the regulatory authorities and put their work ongoing. And it basically lead towards the accident. The everyone uh, which is basically working in that particular site was involved. Uh, it was uh, officers, it was the contractors, it was the organization itself. And they all faced the sanction and the organization which uh, was the head of the project was banned from uh, the activity, not in just one workplace, but all around the country. So everyone has put uh, in some sanction by the organization or by the legal system. R Rahil has to add something. Yes, please. Sir, I want to add, uh, Bin Laden has been cleared from last uh, 1.5 years from that case because I have been there in KSA. Okay. Uh, are they start, start working again? Yeah, yeah, they have started. They get NOC from their uh, Supreme Court. Okay. There is for, for, uh, for how long they have been, been uh, faced with sanction? For how long? Uh, 2015 to 21, six years. Okay, so six years. Uh, how many employees they have? Uh, sir, they have uh, a lot uh, of, I think, uh, if they have in many projects in Jeddah, many I, of my, one I of have, my friends. I have, I have read somewhere, they were, there were around 10,000 workers working within the organization for Bill Laden. And when it was exactly. uh, uh, sanked, uh, by the uh, uh, regulatory authority, so the ten thousand people who have lost their jobs as well. So it was very yes, uh, exactly. big backlash. Okay. Then actually, Bin Laden start rename their company and they give subcontractors and they start many projects. It's not the yeah uh, they uh, they hide them they, from the scenario. Even uh, Jeddah Airport, International Airport Terminal Two. It's okay. been under uh, Bin Laden, but it, they have shifted okay. their name. They're, they're, the, management, the management of that company must be from Pakistan. Yeah. They, yeah they, they, no, sir. <laughs> Egyptian, Egyptian. The, yeah, Egyptian. That's why I, I wonder. Sir. The Egyptian is uh, like Pakistanis. They are not uh, yeah. uh, fulfilling the requirement. They know how to deal with the uh, situations. In, in, in KSA, uh, we always treated, uh, we always informed, beware of two types people. First, Bengali, second, Egyptian. Egyptians. Um, they, these two are very dangerous kind of people. Yeah, we, I have uh, heard a lot of stories about them. Okay. Okay, class. Now I have to uh, make the breakout room for you people and we'll put you in the rooms and I will give you the scenario. Uh, you will be uh, divided in uh, four groups and the scenario will be distributed to you guys and it is all, uh, already sent in the uh, message, uh, chat box. You can download it from here as well. Now, I have to put you all in the uh, breakout room. Uh, in that particular room, you will be discussing uh, alongside that what is a scenario is saying to you and what you are getting from that particular scenario. And afterwards, when the uh, breakout meeting is uh, stopped, we will be discussing at the end that what uh, the information you got from that particular scenario. So uh, for that, I have to uh, put you in breakout rooms. So wait for me, I have to make the breakout rooms. Okay, so how many people are there? We have to more. Add okay. Okay, a uh, Mansoor. Mm -hmm.
everyone please join the room uh, uh i have put you in the room everyone has the uh, uh link you have to join the room uh mansurullah you have four other people they have to join when you are join i will uh, share you the document सबसे पहले डेफिनेटली उन्होंने यही किया सबसे पहले उन्होंने प्रॉपर यही काम किया कि सबसे पहले उन्होंने क्या किया कि एक तो वो बंदा क्या जब वो गिरा उसके एक्सीडेंट हो गया सबसे पहले फर्स्ट एड आई उसको फर्स्ट एड किया और सेकंड बंदे ने ये रिपोर्ट किया इंसिडेंट के ये हो गया वो रिपोर्टिंग उसने फर्स्ट इमरजेंसी मेडिकल सर्विस इधर हॉस्पिटल उनको भी की और अपने कंसर्न ई मैनेजर को भी की और उसने ये चीज देखी कि जब तक के बाकी चीजें सिचुएशन अंडर कंट्रोल या इंजर्ड वर्कर को हेल्प नहीं आती फर्स्ट एड कंटिन्यू करो जी आप लोग क्या कह रहे थे सॉरी मैंने सुना नहीं जी मैं आपने पढ़ लिया ये आ, मैं पढ़ रही हूँ सिनेरियो अगर मैं थोड़ा सा मैंने डिस्क्रिप्शन वहां तक पढ़ी है कि इसके अंदर एक जो साइड है ऊपर का वर्ग मैं तीन पैराग्राफ का अगर समरी बता जी जी या तो लीगल रीजन क्या हो सकता है हमें जो हमारा खास है हाँ जी बोलो बोलो आ, मैं आप लोगों को थोड़ी थ्री पैराग्राफ की समरी डिफाइन करूँ तो इसके अंदर एक मैने ऑपरेशन मैनेजर और ये जो कंपनी है वो कंस्ट्रक्शन बेस्ड कंपनी है और इसके अंदर जो ओके सो यू पीपल आर गेटिंग एनीथिंग आप लोगों को कुछ मिला यस सर मिला अभी थोड़ा सा रहते हैं लास्ट टू पैराग्राफ फिर हम उसको वाइंड अप करते हैं करके ओके 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 नो इश्यूज ओके गाइस व्हेन यू हैव डन योर वर्क देयर इज एन ऑप्शन आस्क फॉर हेल्प in your uh, menu bar you can click on it so i will call you out from the breakout room and we will discuss uh, what you have gotten from that particular scenario thank you okay uh, i will closing all the rooms and uh, we will be discussing that question in the main section so i am taking you out all the people from the room thank you okay as uh, you all were in a uh, breakout room you must have discussed the scenario so whom will discuss the uh, summary of that particular scenario what is scenario all about what type of information that was included in a particular scenario ibrahim would you like to uh, explain it for me okay mm, yes sir yes, sir uh, there is an uh, uh, operation operation manager uh, and uh, there is a uh, construction company okay. so uh, there there occurs a incident uh, of uh, someone uh, some worker is uh, falling from uh, some height so he got injured and but the uh, rapidly uh, first aid was given to him it was a good decision and uh, although all the ppes were given to the workers and uh, there was heavy machinery yet the incident occurred and the uh, operation manager uh, uh, make the report and send to the uh, inspector inspector also visited the uh, site and further 
okay okay uh, we we have some uh, idea about what type of scenario uh, is this in uh, particular uh, information so i have to conclude it uh, a little uh, whenever we are uh, looking it in uh, the scenario there is some sort of information that is included in the scenario the first information will be of the people you are one of the person within the organization and your role must be there and it is always there when you uh, are reading the scenario in the scenario you are the operational manager itself working in the construction site okay and you have overall responsibility about the health and safety and you are concerning about uh, the legal aspect and other such thing which is uh, mentioned in that particular thing and there was an accident happened uh, a person was on the platform and there was not enough guardrails uh, installed around it and the person fell off it and uh, had some injury on his foot and he was bleeding at the particular site there was a first aider uh, who rescued him and you were uh, present there uh, control the situation as an uh, health and safety health uh, a measure of your roles and you have cleared the area as well you have uh, uh, called the ambulance you have the report the accident through online platform to the uh, uh, particular regulatory authority uh, inspect you have talked with the inspector the inspector has advised you and check all the uh, relevant information in terms of risk assessment training record safety policy accident record book etc as well now in that particular scenario there is a question the question was about legal reason uh, and today we have discussed some important information about legal reasons as well so uh, in that particular question uh, the question is what appeared to be legal reason for the way health and safety is managed at the construction site first we have to understand the question the question is the construction site has some obligation the construction site has some legal reason of which they are basically maintaining or they are maintaining the site or they are managing the health and safety at the site now question is what are those reasons on the basis of for which the organization or the construction site is managing the safety so uh, you must have uh, taken some information so who is uh, the first person uh, will add the answer yes mohammad ali sir thank you uh, for me uh, i read I, i went through all this uh, scenario and what i could learn from this is a person who is uh, operational manager for this site he is taking care of health and safety issues and he is very you know working closely with his work workers and he provide to them whatever they need but still a person falling from such height and landing on those uh, piles and get injured how come i mean uh, as you mentioned that guard rail system was not available there as well as full body harness lifeline training for work at height as well as uh, monitoring active monitoring like safety officers by the foreman supervisors a person how person it reached to an unprotected and exposed edge of the platform okay so there are many many gaps we can find out through this and uh, as as they mention uh, uh, that this operational manager he is uh, the, the, the aim of the company the aim of the company and the manager it, uh, himself is to uh, achieve zero accident every year so okay. to achieve this goal what what they have done i mean there can be many gaps we can identify okay now uh, what you have said is basically the uh, responsibilities and the standards which are the reason for which we are we have to manage the workplace health and safety and when you are reading the first paragraph and there is clearly mentioned that you are uh, overseeing all the health and safety measures now what you have mentioned are the health and safety measures that this are not 
Uh, is there any? Okay, wait. So the first legal reason would be the health and safety buyers. And standards. Okay, madam. Madam Saira is with us. Uh, she has raised the, her hand. Uh, what's the other information you have got from that particular scenario? What are the other legal reasons? Yeah. Yes, sir, please. In my uh, yes, sir. I, I read the whole scenario. So, in my reason, in this uh, in uh, on the construction construction side, basically. The, the the employer uh, employer rights and the right of the employees are missing. So uh, employees they they are not providing the safe environment for the workers. And even the is the liability of the employer itself. So why they are working without the uh, guard drill drill and full, full body harness? Also the responsibility of the employer itself. So I think these are the two main reasons. This is the the, the reason of uh, under the con uh, convention and the recommendation. These both other legal, uh, legal, legal, uh, legal, stand, uh, legal things are missing at, in, uh, at the construction site. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, there is a confusion around you people. The question was about, uh, not about the accident. Before the accident, you, uh, if you are uh, reading the question carefully, there, uh, the question is, what appear to be the legal reason for the way health and safety is managed when you... Uh, uh, reading that particular thing, the, uh, the question is asking from the uh, past. What were the reason uh, on the site on which on which basis the health and safety is managed by the construction site? Uh, uh, when uh, we are heading towards the first paragraph, there is the health and safety measures and standards. Uh, the uh, operational manager was uh, managing the uh, workplace and overseeing all the health and safety measures, which are basically the legal reason, the legal compliance, ensuring the legal compliance. That is the particular legal reason uh, for managing the health and safety. Uh, prevention of enforcement actions are the other uh, basic health and safety uh, legal reasons, basically. The criminal proceedings, criminal laws and civil laws uh, these are other things which uh, are managed, which are the reason uh, on the basis of which the organization was managing the workplace uh, and for avoidance of any punitive measures uh, from uh, in, in the form of fines, in the form of shutdown that has already mentioned there. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the organization was also focusing to of their reputation, as they have mentioned, that uh, often such incidents are publicized in me media. The uh, Basically, the reputation of an individual or for an organization is also the legal reason for of which the organization is basically managing the workplace. The accident has occurred uh, later. Before that, what were the reason on the basis of which they are uh, basically the uh, protecting the workplace. So the question was not after the accident, before the accident. What were the uh, reasons? What were the legal reasons the organization was managing the health and safety? So I hope you were getting my point. The question was not after the accident, but was before the accident. It's already clearly mentioned that for the way health and safety is managed, the accident safety was managed before the accident, not after the accident. After the accident, there was a lot of reason we can find out. But what was the before accident? There was a, a different information. So we had uh, highlighted them. Uh, if someone has to add anything, he can answer as well. Okay, Muhammad Ali Shah. Yes, please. Uh, some lady wants to ask. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, madam, you, you can ask. Well, legal compliance. Well, legal compliance uh, to prevent enforcement actions from fines. Uh, this is an other aspect of the legal reason. 